Yes. Hello, how are Hello. you? Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Hi, how are Hello. you? <laughs> Very good. Hello. You want me to go further back? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I am going to give it to you. <laughs> Von wo kommst du? Hier oder überhaupt? Bosnien, hier Wien. Bosnien. Ja. Weil ich überlegt habe, was der Name, aber mir ist nichts eingefallen. Das habe ich noch nie gehört, den Namen. Nein, ich komme aus Bosnien. Nie hart. So, okay, welcome everybody back on the bus and now we have a quick ride, I would say 10, 15 minutes back to the ship for lunch and then you're off again to your next excursions maybe. Um, on the left side, what you see there, this is another harbor here in Vienna, this is the harbor in the city center and there you could take a high-speed catamaran to Bratislava if you can't wait to get there you can take that one it's just an hour it's a bit faster than the Viking Vidar and it's a nice day trip so people do it in the morning and then they return in the evening uh, Bratislava and Vienna by the way are also the two closest European capitals and you can say basically the city of Bratislava starts right after the border more or less the border uh, between Slovakia and Austria <coughs> yeah we will be uh, riding along the Danube Canal we already heard about the graffiti down there in the morning and this is also a very lively place in summer people like to hang out there have a few drinks there's plenty of bars and restaurants down there and it's one of the best places for some nightlife and as you see there are no guardrails people really like to sit at the water very close so sometimes it happens of course that they go for a swim late at night because not intended but a few drinks too much and uh, then you might fall into the canal but you can it's allowed to swim there it's not forbidden so no worries uh, to the right side we have another river if you look there to the right 
Um, so we heard about the Danube, uh, but this river is the Wien River, the Vienna River. And so this was actually the river after which the city was named Wien. Maybe you've read it somewhere uh, in this morning or you, you heard about it. Wien, W-I-E-N. This is the name for Vienna in German. So we call our city Wien. And it was named after the river. Started with the name Vedunia in the past from the Celtic language, which means forest brook actually. <coughs> and over time the language changed and now we call it Wien. And this Wien River is a smaller stream nowadays, not by far not as impressive as the Danube. Um, it was very wild in the past though, and it flooded many times, so they uh, regulated that river <coughs> and put it in that riverbed that you've just seen. So the Wien River crosses the city from the west, uh, parts underground, and it meets the Danube Canal right where we have been seeing it. <coughs> Yeah, and now we go back uh, to the second district again, uh, where we have the Ferris wheel. So one more chance to have a nice view of the Ferris wheel. The second district is also the district where historically for a long time the Jewish people of Vienna were living and they're still living there today. Uh, the numbers are very low, of course, nowadays, but uh, until 1938, until uh, Hitler arrived, until the Holocaust started, Vienna had 165,000 Jewish people, and then with the arrival of Hitler, unfortunately, uh, one third of these people, they, had, uh, they died in the concentration camps, and two thirds of the Jewish population, they managed to survive these uh, dark years by uh, going into exile, or by hiding here in Vienna for many years, which was very risky, but some of them could hide all the years with the help of uh, locals. Yeah, like for example, one person who went to exile was Sigmund Freud and many others, very important people in culture, in uh, politics, economy and so on, they all left Vienna and that was a big loss for us. And after the war, not so many returned back, of course. So today we have around 20,000 Jewish people only in Vienna. And as I said, the second district here, this is their, uh, where they have a lot of their infrastructure, their uh, places where they like to go and like to meet. So in a bit we will be uh, back uh, at the Ferris wheel at the Prater. This is uh, one of the world's oldest amusement parks. It actually goes back to the 18th century. We heard already it's the biggest part is the Green Brat, the big park. And originally we had the hunting grounds of the Habsburgs right there, private hunting grounds. And then the Emperor Joseph II, he opened these hunting grounds to the public, to the people of Vienna. He wanted them he wanted to give them some, yeah, some nature to enjoy the green uh, scenery there, and so the people of Vienna they started to enter the Prater. Um, they loved it there, and they looked for some entertainment, though not, not <coughs> al always looking on trees is a bit boring, maybe over time. So that's how the amusement park started with the first entertainment attractions. You can also get a glimpse of the park. Now if you look to the right after we pass under the bridge, there you see the main street of this big park, which is three miles long, four and a half kilometers, and it goes all the way through the Prada. This, uh, this street actually is closed for traffic, so this is a place where you can do sports, running, cycling, walking, and so on. Really, really beautiful. Uh, yeah, one of the many parks. Vienna is 50% green area. This is really remarkable for such a big city. Yeah, so now to the right, the Prater Hauptallee, the main street here, with the chestnut trees on both sides. And there we got the Ferris wheel. And if you look closely, you see between the between each of two cabins, there would be space for one more cabin, actually. Originally, it had 30 cabins, but after a fire during the Second World War, they uh, restored the Ferris wheel and they only put in half of the cabins. So that's how it turns now, with only 15 cabins <coughs> and apart from the ordinary single ride for 14 euros you could spend some more time if you want at the ferris wheel for example by <laughs> booking a romantic candlelight dinner and then you have a chance to go up and down a few times and if you like that and if that went well your romantic dinner with your date then you could continue and you could have your wedding on the ferris wheel oh, it's quite popular symbolically i do not recommend it to you because what happens is of course, you go up on top, you have your ceremony on the top, and then you get married, you're together forever. 
in the good and in the bad times, and then what happens? It starts to go down immediately. Uh, <laughs> steep descent until you're down at the bottom, they kick you out back to reality, and you start your marriage like that. This Prata is, as it's very old, it's a very traditional place, so you have uh, all kinds of attractions there. You have families that live on site, running their uh, attractions since generations. And it's free to enter. You don't have to pay. You only have to pay for the rides that they want to use. They also have nice beer gardens there, enough food and drink. So also, as you stay one more time, uh, one more day in Vienna, if you feel like going there, it's walkable. It's one underground, one stop with the underground. And it's a nice uh, thing to explore over there. And as you stay one more day, you might want to use the underground to explore a bit on your own. So I will point out now the underground stations which are important for your ship. They are now in a bit on the left and on the right side. You see two glass pavilions and the sign for underground is, is the U, the white U on the blue cube that you see now left and right. This is U-Bahn in German or underground in English and this would be your stop. The stop here for the ship is called Vorgartenstraße. It's a for front garden street. It's easy to remember. It starts with a V. And there's the garden, the garden in it. And this is just four stops from St. Stephen's Cathedral. You have to take the red line. And it goes. You have to take the red line to go to the direction Leopoldau. If you want to go uh, to the ship from the city center, you will exit on the right side. If you want to go into town, you have to enter the station on the left side of the street and you have to take the direction Oberla, as you can see uh, on the sign there. Uh, there is another exit and entrance which is more important for you as it's closer to the ship and this can be seen after the next traffic light. So, so you will enter and exit the underground station most probably from the two class pavilions that come up now on the left to go into town and on the right to uh, get off and to walk back to the ship and from here it's just a short walk to the bridge and then you go down the stairs uh, from the bridge and you turn left and then you walk to your <coughs> ship so very easy and the public transport is quite affordable we have a 24 hours ticket if you want to use that or a single ride costs you two euros 40 or if you're over 65 it's 120 it's important to validate the tickets before you enter the platform there are blue boxes uh, before you enter the platform you put you put in your ticket inside these blue boxes then it will get stamped and you keep the ticket uh, all the, uh, until you leave the underground station until you come over ground uh, again there are no turnstiles in Vienna yeah so that's for those who wanna do something you have uh, this afternoon and you have a day tomorrow you might have some excursions uh, other than that it's really uh, highly recommended to explore a bit on your own, take the underground, or there's Uber, there's cabs, of course, available. You can arrange that also uh, from the ship for you, and it's pretty safe to get around the public transport, as in general, it's pretty safe to get around Vienna. Vienna is, for that size, uh, a rather peaceful uh, city with a relatively low crime rate compared to other similar cities throughout Europe. So I hope you, in enjoyed uh, this morning tour. I want to thank uh, Nihat for the great driving. I want to thank David for leading us into town and the commentary he gave. And I thank you for joining uh, this morning. That was a little overview tour. I hope you have some appetite to explore more. Maybe come back one day, stay a bit longer. And yeah, see you again soon, maybe. Sooner or later. Thank you very much. Take care. And all the best. Goodbye.
Uh, I guess your ship uh, most probably will be the third. I couldn't see the second uh, ship, but the first one definitely not. So most probably yeah. the third, like in the morning. It's the last one. Thank you. 